Amen. Good morning, members. With the gong appearing behind me, I would like to welcome you all to this morning's uh, employment committee meeting, 1st of February. Um, before we go to the agenda, may I take this opportunity to advise you we're not expecting a fire alarm, but should it sound, please remain seated, and Mrs. Matthews will assess the situation and then ask us to run, um, to walk calmly behind her, uh, taking advice that she may give. Uh, also, I'd like to say that these proceedings will be webcast by the Council, but if anyone else is intending to record these proceedings, can you please let me know? I ask this question not to stop you, but for merely to ensure that members and other members of the public in the room know that this is taking place. No, marvellous, thank you. Uh, moving straight on then to our agenda item one, apologies for absence. We have apologies for absence from Councillor Wilson. I don't think there's anybody else missing. I'm afraid we don't have any notification of a substitute member for Mrs. Wilson. Um, I completely forgot she was on this committee and uh, we'd replaced her last night and this meeting this morning, but they are. So uh, I'm sure I will have hands slapped later. Um, agenda item three, urgent items. There are none as far as I'm aware. Thank you. Uh, agenda item four, disclosures by members and officers. Marvellous, thank you very much. Agenda item five, any disclosures of lobbying? None. Thank you very much. All right, um, I had thought about moving the... Uh, agenda items around, but uh, we won't be doing that. You'll see it'll all become uh, apparent why later. Agenda item six then, to consider whether any items should be taken in private because of the possible disclosures of exempt information. There are no part two items on this agenda today, so therefore I propose to take all of the items in public as per the agenda. Thank you. So agenda item seven, the minutes of the meeting held on the 18th of August. I start on page one. If anybody is not happy with anything, would they please shout out, don't raise your hand, because I'm looking down at the page numbers. So agenda, so the uh, minutes, page one and page two. And looking at the finishing time of the last meeting on page three. Brilliant. Okay, I shall in due course sign those as accurate minutes. Is that all okay? Okay, moving on to the business in hand then. Agenda item eight, report of the head of HR, shared services for the pay policy statement 2017. Val Sanderher, I understand that you'll be presenting this. Thank you. Um, yes, yeah, so part of the transparency legislation of 2012, um, there's a requirement to update the pay policy statement on an annual basis. Um, this has been agreed each year by the committee and before it's published on the website. So the report on page four is not proposing any recommendations or decisions, but it's more to agree the actual report, which is an update com compared to the previous year one. Once the report has been agreed by this committee, they will go to the council meeting on the 1st of March for formal approval before we can have, um, put it onto the website. And I just want to mention that the report is in the same format as it has been in previous years, so there's been no change to the format. So the updates, if I just go for the updates, so from page nine, the themes of the workforce strategy have changed. So, and this was agreed by the um, PNR committee in July 2016. So that the, the themes now for the workforce strategy are organizational culture and change, resourcing, development and rewards. So that has changed. And on page 12, there's some information on, on the fourth paragraph. There's just some updated information um, regarding the new legislation that will come in sometime this year that will cap exit payments to 95,000 um, and recover payments of 
from people who come back into the public sector with a minimum salary of 80,000 within a 12 month period. So that information has been updated in there. And the other update in the report is page, fif page 15. On page 15, you'll see the table on taxable pay for the chief executive earnings. Um, and the main difference in the earnings has been the um, payment of 15,774 for the chief executive's role as a returning officer in the two elections last year. So that's been the main difference for the salary and also uh, an, an incremental point progression on, on the salary scales as well. All the other figures in the report have been updated. So the information is still the same, it's just the figures have been updated. And, um, and they're based on figures from the December payroll information. So before we publish it, we have to run another report for the, from, um, to get the reports at the end of March. And once we've got those figures, well, this report will be updated and then put onto the website. Any questions? Thank you very much, Bell. I believe uh, Councillor Burton, you had uh, expressed an interest to question. Now I am. Very minor point, uh, page 18 in the appendix, second paragraph, reference to cabinet, whether that needs amending. I've not thoroughly checked everything else to see if there's any other references, but just wanted to draw that to your attention. Sorry, say page 18, sorry? Page 18. Oh, right, yes. Um, Chief Secretary, head of HR. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I want me to speak now, yeah? Okay. Um, so the head of HR is responsible for undertaking pay negotiation with trade unions, but the cabinet takes ultimate responsibility for agreeing the budget. Okay. But, but is it the committee chairman or is it P&R? One would assume it would be PNR acting as cabinet in that instance, but yes. So yes, I agree with you. Ultimately, it goes to PNR uh, financial. So yes, um, I think that should be changed to the PNR committee. Councillor Blackmore. Um, thank you, Chairman. Just one um, question, Mrs. Sander. You mentioned PNR in July. The only PNR meeting I can think of was the 4th of July, and I thought that was a co-located one here in this chamber for three authorities, but I don't think it was about this subject. Was there another PNR meeting later on in the month? It was July, July 2016. There was a PR, PNR uh, meeting, and it was the workforce strategy update that was taken to that meeting, not the pay policy, it's the workforce strategy. I, I, I understand that, but the only PNR meeting I can think of was on a Monday, 10 o'clock in this chamber, and I'm asking if there was another one. Can someone just give me the date, please? I can see there's another one, but I don't know when. Please. I do recall a, a, another meeting of policy and resources. Uh, it was, I, I'm afraid I don't have the exact date. It was something like the 20th of July. Councillor Blackmore, if you want, we can um, have a look into that and then come back to you. Well, I certainly remember the co-located one, but that was for a specific item, wasn't it? So uh, I think it may be about 20 minutes long or something like that. So uh, if you want, we can come back to you, but if not, I'll uh, go to Councillor McLaughlin. Thank you, Chair. I just want to be absolutely sure. You make a statement on page 6 in 5.1 as this is a statement of what is already in place and does not make any changes to the current position. Um, I, would just, I, I would just ask, apart from the ones you've just taken us through, presumably, can you, can you, can you absolutely confirm otherwise this is the same document that, that PNR did see uh, back in July? No, this is not the same document that PNR have seen in July. I've made reference to the PNR meeting in July because the themes of the workforce strategy have changed, which was taken to the PNR committee in July. This is a work policy, this is the pay policy statement, and that has not been taken to the PNR committee. 
It's been updated from last year, which we have to do on an annual basis, and we report, we report this to this committee. Uh, okay, but can you... Com uh, so we have seen this before, that's the point. We've seen the pay policy statement before. If it wasn't at the PNR, it doesn't matter, but we've seen it before. And can you confirm that the only changes you've made are those that you've just gone through with us? So the report gets update, updated every year, and we've been doing it since 2012. So on an annual basis, we have been reporting it. It used to be reported to the Employment Development Panel, and now it obviously goes to committee before it goes to full council. Um, Apart from the updates I've gone through, the only up other updates in the report are the figures. So where there's figures mentioned in the report, reports have been run and those figures have been updated as well as the information I've gone through. Councillor Milton, if I may, at the, at the pre-meeting, um, we had two officers there and Val was presenting, but we were assured that the items that would be raised would be the only, the changes that we should be looking at. So what's been highlighted are the changes that we haven't seen, and the figures um, in the tables and the appendixes. So they're the changes that we're really voting on, what we're looking over today, um, and would seek to approve. So if I'm understanding what we're being asked to do correctly, that we recommend to full council to um, agree this report prior to publication subject to that small amendment that I've suggested I'd be happy to move that thank you very much Councillor Burton does anybody like to second that if not I shall <laughs> a flurry of hands <laughs> uh, right <laughs> do you wish to say anything okay thank you very much uh, Councillor Powell so proposed by Councillor Burton seconded by Councillor Powell all those in favour, please. Yes, Councillor Blackmore. Um, I'm sorry, I've, I've had a quick look at the um, agenda for the 26th of July and I still can't find where the work workforce strategy is. Mrs Sandler, would you be kind enough just to drop me an email just to say where it is so I can just check that we have seen it. I just feel a little bit uncomfortable that I can't find it. The next report is actually on the workforce strategy update. So this is a report that was, the workforce strategy was the document that was taken to the meeting in July. I was, it wasn't me, it was Dino that actually took the report. Um, so the actual document that was taken is actually in the appendix in the second report. I'm re being referred here by uh, Mrs. Matthews to say it was the 29th of June the meeting of the 29th of June. So it was prior to our one in here for the 20 minute meeting, but uh, she has just shown me the document of the 29th of June, not July. But it, it, it is a legislation amendment, so, um, and the figures that have been related. So if we can, uh, if there's anything different, Councillor Blackmore, I'll uh, refer to Val's, yes, carry on. Okay, uh, that's okay, Chairman, I found it. Um, I'm just a little bit concerned because we've been given facts and we're rel relying on them. So I don't yeah. think there is any harm in us just questioning it. Yeah. Uh, and in fact, if I may back up Councillor Blackmore's, perhaps if we do refer to a previous committee, if we could have the date of the committee so that should we want to look back on it, even though the papers are copied here, it just completes the information. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Yes, for strategy, I think that should uh, come forward in the future. So when you relay back to a previous meeting, if you could give the date, uh, that would be lovely. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to item, item eight. But, Mr. Chairman, I might have missed that, but did you actually declare that vote? Okay. Mrs. Matthews took the count. That was all in favour. No abstentions and no Okay, thank you. Moving on to item eight, report of the head of HR Shared Services, pay policy statement 2017. Sorry, nine. I haven't ticked it, see, ticking things twice as good. Agenda item nine, report of the head of Shared Services, workforce strategy update report, and once again, Val. 
Um, so this report is for the committee to note progress on the actions on the workforce strategy. Um, and this is the report that, this is the um, workforce strategy that was taken to that June committee meeting. The committee did request for an update twice a year. So the report on, from page 36 lists the, the updates that have happened so far. And the key, the key changes have been um, the themes of the workforce strategy, which I've mentioned in, as part of the pay policy, that those have changed. Um, senior management appointments, some members of this committee have already been involved in the appointment process for the two directors at the council and also the MKS director who's going to join us in April this year. Senior management development program started in July 2016 and the program will run between 12 to 15 months and it's to build and develop the senior management group which includes the head of service directors working with the chief executive. The seven habits training is ongoing and we now allow all staff to attend that training. It was originally just for managers. Um, we've developed a stress resilience training. There's one for um, managers and one for employees. Um, and, and they're run at also at Swarborough Council as well as Maidstone Council. On page 37, the council has received a KCC Healthy Business Award for the approach that we take in managing sickness absence. The PR committee also have agreed the health and safety strategy. Reward package has been re relaunched last year and um, we put all our benefits together on one, um, on one part of the internet site so staff are more aware of what benefits they're entitled to. We're also currently taking part in the IIP assessment and we're hoping to have the results um, by this month. And the only other final thing I wanted to mention was the action plan is in, on page 70 which is appendix 2 and that has been updated regarding what I've just mentioned and, um, and further updates have been included in there as well. Any questions? Thank you very much, Bal. I do have a first person to ask, Councillor Burton. Thank you, Chairman. Um, could you just clarify for me how the timing of the overlap of the different strategies works in terms of when this particular one is refreshed. And, and what's making me ask this, if I cut straight to the chase, um, page 46, we're referring to the strategic plan, which is under review currently. So inherently, this document will always be out of date because of that, or, or in the style that it is, because of that review process. So that um, included excerpt page there on 46, it's not finished through PNR yet, but I believe it will certainly change, say the bottom third of it might disappear. And I'm just wondering whether this document should actually refer to the strategy rather than quote specifics from what are effectively living documents constantly being reviewed. The workforce strategy is for 2016 to 2020. However, if there's been updates that have been taking place in the council, this does also get updated. So last year, this got updated because the themes had changed. But again, if the strategy changed for the council, then we would put that in there as well in the document. Okay, that's reassuring. So, so my suggestion is that a document like this should refer to the other documents, the other strategies, but not contain um, direct sections copied because it will always be inherently or has the risk of being inherently out of date until it's reviewed next. Whereas if it's just a reference, it constantly is self-refreshing in that regard. Thank you very much, Councillor Burton. Yes, I do, I do agree. In the light of our meeting previous to this, um, I, I think we need to refer to specific documents rather than the detail of the specific document. Therefore, it will allow it to change through the the course of its life, um, I think that's a, a good good thing to adopt uh, and to follow. So um, is that uh, agreed by the rest of the committee that we should ask for that to, to happen in the light of this? Agreed. Thank you very much. Uh, Councillor Ring. Sorry, I did have Councillor Blackmore first. Sorry. Um, thank you, Chairman. Uh, just picking up on something, page 36, we've got the appointive of a substantive Mid-Kent Services Director who's joining in April 2017. 
Um, really, just why so late? Because I know the interviews were carried out, I think, last October. If you could just give us just a little bit of background behind that, I think that would be useful, please. I think we actually finished recruiting to that post in November. Um, the person that we offered the, the job to decided not to take that role. Then we offered it to our reserve. She accepted the position. Um, but she hadn't told her director because he was away on leave until after Christmas. So that's where the delay has been. He was apparently not around at the time to, to, she didn't want to email him. She wanted to notify him face to face that she, she got a new job. So that she didn't hand in notice until January. She has to give a three months notice. That's why her start date is in April. I think really it's, it's procedural and I don't know how much detail we should have actually said there on a webcast, but uh, I think it, it hasn't been that we've slowed anything down. Um, it has been uh, the procedure on both sides. Um, so we do have, uh, there are lots of other things, medicals, everything has to be taken into account and obviously due process where she has been employed previously. So I don't think it's anything that's necessarily been slowed down um, and I think Bal covered that more than, thank you. Okay, if I can just come back on that point, um, do they not use FaceTime or Skype? Is that not useful? I don't know, I just think we've got all this modern technology. I know things have to be done face to face. It's just a slight observation. Um, picking up on page 37 and the investors in people, um, and my concern is how much is the cost to the council for that? for our part to A, take part in it and have assessments, etc. Because um, it's my understanding it's quite a substantial cost. I haven't got the figures in front of me. I think the question has been raised already and I think Mark has also been involved in responding to that, I think. Yes, I'm happy to add to that. Uh, I don't have the figure for the cost of the investors in people assessment uh, but it's a, a relatively modest amount the other cost of course is the cost of members of staff taking part in the assessment I think the the main thing to take away from this is that it is being delivered within existing service budget so it's not something that is a, a one-off or, or unexpected so we can do it within the HR budget uh, it's good practice to have uh, a regular IRP assessment and to maintain our accreditation but on the very specific point of what we're paying uh, for the assessment we're very happy to come back to you on that actually, actually mr. green it's not just the assessment but overall the total cost I mean it, I, I don't mean to be too pedantic but bearing in mind we've we've got to look at all our budgets and all the monies that are being spent across the council and we're desperately trying to protect our frontline services if we're spending circa 60k for something like this should we actually be putting that money elsewhere to frontline services so I flag it because it is a concern and we have got pressure on all our budgets as you indicated in a meeting only about an hour and a half ago. So, Councillor Blackmore, you, you just said £60,000. Is that just a figure you're grabbing from the air or is it some knowledge you have? It's a figure I've grabbed from the air, but we don't know, do we? We don't know whether it's £500 or £50,000. Agreed, but until we get so that information, I, think, I don't think we should be banding a big figure like that. No, but, but that doesn't... I'm sorry, Chairman, that doesn't make any difference. We yeah. should be looking at all the costs in our budgets yeah. and not just accept I them. I totally agree, so, but let's get the actual black and white figures and then we can have a look at that. And I'd rather you didn't now. just talk across me, Chairman, because that's incredibly rude. But... Yeah. I think the point still has to be made. We are being asked to save a huge amount of money, four and a half million pounds over four years, so everything should be looked at because we were told quite clearly by the chief executive six months ago that nothing is sacrosanct, nothing is sacred, everything has to be looked at. Uh, Mr Green, we'd like to just come back to that before I then go to Councillor Harper and Councillor Gooch. I'll take uh, Mr. Green on that comment and then I'll come to Marion, yes. I don't believe the figure is as much as 60,000, but as I said, we'll come back to you with the figure. 
and on the point about looking for value for money, because of exactly what you said, the importance of looking at uh, all the expenditure, this was considered uh, carefully at a corporate leadership team meeting amongst uh, the directors. Uh, and the conclusion was that it was something that it was worth doing because the investors in people standard uh, is uh, helpful from the point of view of recruiting staff. Uh, it uh, promotes training and development. There are a lot of benefits, not necessarily immediate cash benefits, but there is, uh, it was concluded, a benefit in going for the investors in people's standards. So it hasn't been a decision taken lightly, uh, I can assure you. We did consider it carefully. Thank you, Mr. Green. Councillor Ring. Sorry, I'd, I'd just like to ask, oh, sorry, I'll just take glasses to read and off to see your face. Um, so all the replies that come back, uh, workforce strategy, lion manager survey. Um, I, I, I just, just wanted to try and understand is, we, we've been doing this quite a long time now, some of the projects. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, it starts at um, 65. I'll, I'll just give you... It's not a specific question on one particular thing on there, Chairman, but it just, um, the, the whole document. Um, I see lots of things, and going back, really, um, Councillor Blackmore's um, idea on budgets. Um, can I ask, what actually happens when there's no reply? Does that actually mean that the line manager doesn't think it works anymore? It's not actually doing what it says on the tin. Do we actually look at every single employee in the council? Because we have lots of departments that don't get very large money and great package deals. Um, and I'm just wondering if anybody actually picks up why it does say naught. Because could we not be listening to the line managers about how things should change. That, that's all I'm asking. Is this actually done for every employee that is employed? Because to me, from the chief executive right down to the good people that sweep this street, have a voice. So all I'm saying is, is this a document that makes us sound grand? Or are we generally, generally interested on what everybody thinks and maybe changes that need to be done. Thank you, Chairman. Val, do you want to come back on that at all? Um, so Appendix 2 is a line manager survey, survey and that really is just for the workforce strategy. It's how do we want to develop the workforce strategy to support managers, to help, help, to help them deliver their role. However, there are other um, surveys that we carry out so we have done the best company survey a few years ago which goes to all staff so we can get their feedback on what they think of the organization it, it, it does go to all staff. okay ninety percent is done online if, if I was to really be pedantic about this oh I'll use your word um, could I have a survey of everybody that doesn't actually sit at a computer? But would I be wrong in asking that? If you're referring to the, the manual staff, they do have the option of doing an online survey as well as and, and, and if they come back to us for another option of completing a survey. So the IIP assess, assessment, everyone again has been asked for feedback. And I know with the the guys at the depot, they have been asked what's the best way for them to respond to that survey. I haven't been involved in the IRP assessment, so I can't actually answer that question. But I know there have been other, other options as well as the online survey to complete. Thank you. So all I'm asking is, you will come back afterwards then and tell me how many manual workers, not just at the depot, have actually answered that. that that's all I'm asking. I think I've got a right to do that. 
Would it also, Councillor Ring, be uh, good to know the actual number of people that did respond out of all our employees? So not just the percentage. So if we... So actual numbers of people that, that did. Which survey are you referring to exactly? Are you referring to the IRP one? It, it starts there, yeah, Appendix 3. No, 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 I'm just saying I would like to know, and I think the Chairman's backed me on this, we would like to know how many people actually replied. Not a percentage, because that is very, very woolly. It's just a pluck number. I would like to know out of how many staff, even within this council, actually replied. But strongly an extra emphasis on manual workers across the council. Is that, is that okay, Val? Will you be able to come back with that? Do you want to uh, email it directly or do you want to come that back to the next committee meeting? I think every uh, member would be quite interested in that information, so I'd like to see it come back to the committee, please. Okay, thank you very much. So, uh, we all agreement to that, yes? Just generally? Don't need to see a vote, yeah? Okay. Uh, okay, if you're, uh, you're happy with the answer to that? Thank you. So, uh, Councillor Harper, please. Thank you. Um, going back to investors and people, there's a, if you like, there's two costs to the organisation. There's clearly the cost of actually joining the group and paying investors in people. But if you like, the larger cost to the authority is going to be our opportunity costs in terms of staff time. I mean, most of the charities and when I worked in local government, we've all been investors in people and accredited. And there can be, depending where you are on it, a lot of staff time involved, a lot of briefings, and especially for HR staff and managers and so on. Um, and I think a, a cost-benefit analysis or review for us might be useful to know because given, as uh, Councillor Blackmore was saying, the, the constraints we're under, if we're effectively deploying a fair amount of management time and staff time towards investors in people, we need just to as assess as to, you know, whether we could redeploy that resource elsewhere so that our current budget for staff would actually get us more than it potentially does now. If you suddenly give everybody a couple of extra hours in a week or, you know, even a couple of hours in a year, you know, across the whole workforce of hundreds, that starts to be, uh, can be significant. And I think also, I, I just question, in terms of staff recruitment, <laughs> do we think having investors in people actually would attract people to working for Maidstone Council? as opposed to they want to work for the local council or whatever, and Maidstone's the place they're going to apply for. I'm not necessarily sure investors in people would be an attractor, because when I've applied for jobs with IIP accredited organisations, that's not the reason I'm necessarily applying, and I'm, you know, you're probably not even aware until you're in the organisation they've got IIP. Um, and, and also my, under, my knowledge of IIP is that it tends to be more useful, if you like, for third sector organisations, and organisations where they're actually doing work for councils and government because quite often in commissioning documentation it does ask for a number of accreditations and one typically it might ask for is investors in people. So working for charities, major service charities would tend to go for it for that type of reason. But obviously we're not commissioned as such, you know, we're the commissioner of things. So I just wonder, I think it might, as I say, be worth looking into in a bit more information so that we can be quite clear in our minds as to whether it's something we wish to continue with. Uh, and I think picking up Councillor Ring's point, I just say I think we do need to bear in mind the bulk of our workforce probably are on the sort of manual grades or aren't on computer office-based work and therefore don't have access to computers. Where I work at the National Autistic Society, 80, uh, about 90% of our staff fall into that category. And we have to do lots of effort to work out how to do staff engagement because it's not online. But they tend to have low levels, and I'm sure our, 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 some of our, our staff here is not that different, low levels of computer literacy. And therefore, whilst online might be offered and might be made available to them, we really do need to think how we do engage. So typically at the NAS, we do it through staff uh, briefings from their managers. So, you know, there's a whole method of working out how you engage with staff 
who aren't either computer illiterate or don't have access to computers in work time. And I think that's really quite important for us. Thank you very much. Uh, very good considerations. Um, take that on board. Uh, Councillor Gooch, please. Thank you, Chairman. Um, on the subject of IIP, I understand that it's a national measure, isn't it? It's not just something that's just done for us. Um, and whilst I agree, I think it would help us to have a greater awareness about its cost and a greater awareness of how, our, how many of our staff actually complete it. I'm all up for that. What concerns me is what message would it give our employees if we decided to pull out? That's what concerns me. And I know we're under huge strain with budgets and whatever, but our staff are our most valuable asset. And they work for the borough council, not just because they want the money, but because Maidstone is a great place to work. And I think we've, we've got a good community amongst our staff by and large. And I would hate to see anything that would detract from that. But by all means, let's have some more information about it. For example, I was going to say, sorry, is there, may, we, may I respectfully ask for one conversation at a time, sorry. please? Thank you. Um, could I ask, is there perhaps a more cost-effective way of carrying out the IIP? Are we tied to one consultant or one provider. That's the kind of information I think that's causing us a bit to think, well, hang on a minute, we're supposed to be looking at our budgets, as my colleagues have quite rightly pointed out. We have got to look at the budgets. Are we doing it the right way, the most cost-effective way? I think the outcome is terribly important, but are we doing it the best way? So I think that's all I've got to say on this. And bear in mind, this is a, a, a report as an update so let's just bear that in mind. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you very much, Councillor Gooch. What I seem to get from this, uh, it, it seems that it might be good to do an evaluation on the evaluation. And I think if that can come back to us at the next meeting, I, I think that would be time well spent to look into this and also to look and see whether anybody else does it in any other way. Is there a more cost-effective way of doing it? Um, is there a more inclusive way of doing it? Um, but in case I haven't uh, picked up anything, well, I won't, I won't put that forward as a recommendation just now. I'll wait to just hear the other. Councillor Garton, Blackmore, Burton and Joy. Does anybody else wish to speak to this after those? Because if not, oh, thank you very much, Mr. McLaughlin. Right, so that's to Councillor Garton then, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes, I may just... Uh the reason I asked to, to speak is just to reiterate what you just said. Can we have that discussion at a meeting where we can make it as an agenda point to evaluate that? Um, it is quite a concern, especially since the Appendix 3, the Workforce Strategy Line Manager Survey, does not seem to put too much emphasis on that with only two responses. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Blackmore again. I'd just like to add to um, Councillor Garton's comments. I agree with him. There's only two responses. I think there's another issue as well. If you look at um, which are the bits of the benefits that the staff actually are, are most keen on, flexible working and flexi time. So that really does show that's what's really important to them and that's what helps them gain that quality of life that they want. So although I think some of the schemes that we are affiliated to may tick certain boxes. I think we do need to check, do we get value for money? And I'm actually not convinced that staff value them. I think they value what helps them carry out their day-to-day -day lives, whether that's easier to get their kids to school, get them home, look yeah. after their elderly relatives. And that flexible working is something that we absolutely must retain at all costs. Yes, I totally agree. Um, that gives you better quality of life, doesn't it, to be able to do everything in the best way possible. So I uh, agree with that. Councillor Burton, please. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, so if I can start with a question probably for Mr Green. So when we pick on a subject like this and we try to understand the budget implications, um, because of course all of 
the budget sections have been to all of the relevant service committees. So can I ask the budget for this particular scheme that we're talking about, would that have been expressed within staffing costs across, across each service committee or would it have been an item that PNR would have had within their budget considerations? Where's it buried? And, and then I have another point to make, Chair. If you're referring to the uh, cost of the investors and people assessment where we're using an external advisor, that would be in the nature of a consultancy cost. It wouldn't be part of the staffing budget. It would be within a, a line in the HR budget for consultancy, external advice, those type of things. And because it's a regular ongoing budget, it wouldn't be uh, subject to specific scrutiny by policy and resources other than that you're looking at all of the budgets each year and agreeing them and when policy and resources looks at the budget at its meeting on the 15th of this month as you probably remember you get a line by line analysis of all of the all of the budget so in practice you don't go through each line but that information is approved by policy and resources at that at that meeting So to be clear, it's in the PNR budget, it's in consultancy costs somewhere, at least that element of, and that's where we would need to drill down. So, so just to finish, I just wanted to share my personal experience. Um, we used to run Investor in People Scheme. I did away with it years ago. Um, staff welcomed it. It meant that we were actually more focused upon their individual development rather than chasing the badge. Um, so just my personal experience and, and I very broadly concur with everything Councillor Harper said relating to the subject, some discussion back. Thank you very much Councillor Burton. Yes, positive, uh, positive comments. Um, I'm working up a recommendation on my pad over here so I will now go to Councillor Joy. Thank you Chairman. Um, I apologise in advance if you're all looking over at me saying I should know but I don't know and I like to ask a question if I can get the answer. And I'm happy for it to come to me personally rather than the whole committee. Um, page 37, available options, and it's 5.1. The workforce strategy was developed with input from the managers in the organisation, discussed with both trade unions and staff forum. I personally don't know who the staff forum is. Now, if everyone else says they do, no, I'm glad. <laughs> Um, I'm just curious, A, who are the staff forum, how many members sit on the staff forum and the makeup of the staff forum? I personally would be very interested to know who it is. Thank you. I think that should come from Bow, possibly. So the staff forum is um, representatives from each team that attend the staff forum and I think they get arranged every quarterly or monthly, I can't remember how often staff forum gets organised, but it's a rep from each team that will attend the staff forum and it's an update, so most likely the manager will give an update what they might have done, they need to share that with the organisation and it's a rep's duty to um, update the team in team meetings. So when they go back, they should be updating their teams um, on some, what's, been, what's been discussed. And I'm not sure how many members they, they are. Thank you very much. Uh, Val, I think in the light of what was just said there, would there be any harm in either someone from this committee or the chairman or vice chairman being on that um, team, on that uh, board or the staff forum? Or are we not allowed to because we're not staff? In, but we're responsible for the employees. So therefore... As the employee committee, we didn't even know who made up that committee, yet it's in our notes and we don't have any input. That's a flurry of hands. I'm going to carry on to Councillor McLaughlin. Obviously, that put the cat amongst the people. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just want to ask whether the um, line manager survey, what you, personally what you consider of the response level of 49%, uh, these are line managers, they're responsible people, they have staff working for them, and 51% of them couldn't care less about whether they, yeah. evidently, uh, what their staff think and, and, and go to the trouble of, of, of passing on those views. It's a workforce 
survey, so you're relying on your line managers not only to, to put his own view forward, but to consolidate that with his, his team's view as well. Um, I think we should focus, much, uh, uh, focus their attention much, much more on this and make it a compulsory response. How would you feel about that? We have, we have never made it compulsory. It's voluntary that um, managers complete service, so does employees. To force somebody to do it, I don't know whether that would be the attention you're forcing someone to complete a survey. They may not want to complete a survey. I, I, I don't know. I wouldn't know the answer to that. Well, if I may, Chair, can I, can I suggest that it, it's given some consideration? Okay. I think prior to me just saying that I or someone should be on the staff forum, that was at the end of uh, what we were really talking about. I would, if I may, would the wording of a recommendation from this committee to evaluate the IIP, to look at best practice and to assess whether how we carry out the IIP is cost effective to us and produces positive feedback for us to be able to assess what we're doing. So, in essence, that would be my recommendation to come back to the next meeting, please, with that assessment. So, ignore what I said about the staff forum. Could we, do you agree with that as a recommendation from this committee? Is that seconded by Councillor Garton? All those in favour of that recommendation? Oh, yes. It's a bit of a pull in a way. Well, I'm taking but, that as all those were in favour. Were you against then, Councillor Burton? I'll, I'll support the recommendation, but may I make a comment afterwards, please? Certainly. Thank you. So there was uh, unanimous support for that. Councillor Burton. I, I just wanted to make the point to ourselves that we're actually on the cusp of where we as councillors have an overarching responsibility say for budget setting which really controls resources which drives these outcomes and the authority of the head of paid service that actually really is the person that's using tools like this as she sees fit to get the best out of staff so I, so I you know in that I, I do broadly support the recommendation that we've just made that perhaps have a look at this but what we're really saying to the chief executive is have a look at this and maybe just reassure us that the value is there. Otherwise, we're really micromanaging to the level that I believe we shouldn't. That's a valid point. Thank you very much. Do, do we believe that we should refocus that recommendation then to the chief executive to ask whether she thinks it's prudent to do this? Or are we saying we'd like the report to come back as soon as possible to the next meeting or on the basis of what Councillor Burton just said, are we precluding really what, um, what might come out of it and therefore saying we don't agree with it, therefore if, now you If should. I might say, I think let's just leave the recommendation as it is because it, it, we, we've made that, but I just wanted to put our thinking back a little bit. And of course the other point where we have a more direct intervention is when we consider the budget, you know, if, we, if we remove that amount of cash, it kind of drives an outcome so that our role is slightly different. So I, I, I don't want to add any more. I do, I do agree with you that, that I, I don't think we'll be able to evaluate what might come back as a report from our recommendation to then be able to make a constructive decision as to whether to remove it from the budget and to make a budget saving. So I think the actual timetable of getting something back um, if we could have had this prior to this meeting and actually done it now, then we'd be able to make a recommendation to the budget. But I think we can't look to cut it but from here. We are looking at look a four-year budget horizon, of course, Chair. Absolutely. So I think it would be a good thing to look at and then make a constructed evaluation. Are you all right with that then, Councillor Ring? You don't want to speak because Councillor Powell's just... You did wave. Oh, sorry, no. Just quickly... Um, I'm sorry I've caused all this um, sort of thing, but, but at the end of the day, it's the workforce actually on the ground. And I'm also um, 
Councillor Gucci's bit, everybody's proud to work for Maitstone Borough Council. We wouldn't be here if we wasn't, wasn't proud. But all I'm saying is, we've got to be honest, the workforce is getting smaller. I did the um, Investors in People 30 years ago. 30 years with 400 staff. And we're still looking at it. And no disrespect, and I'm bound to get shocked for it, let's get this right. This is not for staff. It is to prove that we are a good council. Not, not, in, not in our staff's eyes. Far from it. It's actually to make senior teams, personnel, absolutely fantastic. They run a great shop. All I'm saying is, maybe we ain't asking the, the, the staff properly to be open because they run the shop, not a label. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Harper. Sorry, it was Councillor Powell. You got your hand up like some schoolboy. No, so back to Councillor Powell, then to you, Councillor Harper. It's okay. Thank I don't you. take it personally. Yeah. No, it's just really following on to, to what Councillor Burton said earlier on. Um, in my previous life as a, as a business owner, what we decided then that investors in people was totally wrong. We were doing it for the wrong reason. We were always under the impression that we needed it. We worked out that we didn't. We had our own training programs. Um, so from business owners to this council, well, a council doesn't need it. Maybe the supplies to the council, as Councillor Harper mentioned earlier on do. But I think you'll find that when you actually do your sums and work out not the actual cost, but the actual time, put that together, and I'm not using figures out the air or anything, but I think Councillor Blackmore's figure would be uh, on the lower side. I think we should just get rid of it. Yeah. Thank you very much, Councillor Powell. Councillor Harper, hopefully to wind this up, please. In terms of the staff forum, um, which was obviously raised, and it clearly, if it's got reps from each team, it's probably a very, very powerful way of the authority showing value in terms of getting messages to and from staff. I just wonder if there is a role for um, a representative uh, from this committee, or, you know, as a councillor or the leader of the council, or someone to actually attend those meetings. If I just give the example again at the National Autistic Society, we've got our 3,500 staff, we have a joint staff forum, and our trustees are the equivalent of councillors. One of them attends all of their meetings to show the importance that the uh, board of trustees there attached to its staff, because it's the staff, as is here, who do the work, who actually get the council doing the stuff. And it gives the staff a feeling of being valued, but it also gives, in that case, the board of trustees, the awareness of what's going on at the staff forum and at a lower level, which they wouldn't get normally. Um, and it's not detracting at all from the role of senior officers, but it's just showing the importance attached to staff, in our case, by councillors. So I just wonder whether there's a role to have um, one of us, ourselves from this committee uh, attending the staff forum. Thank you very much. That was sort of my idea, thoughts behind that. Councillor Garton, is it appertaining to what has just said from Councillor Harper? Thank you. Uh, I totally disagree with uh, Councillor Harper. I mean, this committee is part of the legislative part of government, and the staff forum is part of the executive, and we're just intermingling here arms of government and uh, trying to micromanage something which we shouldn't do. Um, by all means, if the staff forum would want to invite an observer from this committee on an occasion, for good relations, that's something completely different, but we should not uh, mingle in something which uh, we don't have any business in. Thank you very much, Councillor Garton. Um, we do actually have to try and uh, move the recommendation on the papers, if that's possible. I know we sort of strayed a little bit away from it, but um, if you want me to do that from the chair, I will, but uh, if anybody wishes to do that from the floor, so... Okay, then on papers, agenda item nine, the recommendation on the report is that the committee note the progress of the actions set out in the workforce strategy. 
No, noted. wait a minute. I thought, there was, I thought you'd got an amendment about the evaluation. We have put that through as a separate recommendation. Right, so so, Councillor Burton, were you seconding me? Uh, well, I don't think it needs to be. It's just noted, no. isn't it? And I move next no, order of business. Isn't it? Okay. Okay, so therefore we will note that then. And uh, as it, thank you very much, Councillor Gooch. All those in favour of noting the report we've just been given. Thank you. Agenda item 10. What? Yeah. Okay, sorry, yes. On item nine, I made, the, the committee made a recommendation, but we didn't actually formulate it, that um, no item is specifically mentioned in uh, previous paragraphs that are given to us uh, with detail in pre other strategies and they should be just generally stated so that it includes any other amendments to those strategies. So do we want to make that as an actual recommendation or just an advisory note to take away? I, personally I think it should just be an advisory note. Yeah. We don't need to tie officers down so tightly that they can't use discretion. So can you take that as an advisory note then? Thank you back to HR. Thank you very much. Councillor Blackmore. Um, Councillor Cox, I think you've actually missed something. I thought we, there was something else a note, um, associated with the evaluation of the IIP programme and it seems to have just disappeared completely off yeah. the radar. No, 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 we didn't vote on that. We only voted on, on number one. I made the recommendation to evaluate the IIP, to look at best practice and to how we carry out the IIP and to report back to this. So, sorry? Is that okay then? Well, it, it is, but I just feel it was done out of sync, that's all. So I'm sorry that I missed it. It was at 11... So, yeah, we put that through as an additional recommendation. Yeah. <gasps> Councillor McLaughlin. Uh, I, I do feel that, um, that the suggestion I made earlier on the uh, line manager survey was rather dismissed, Chair, because you quickly moved back to what we were talking about at the time. So, no, that's nothing to do with this subject, and it never emerged again. I'm very disappointed, and I'll say it again, at the level of response from our line managers to the survey being only 49%. And I did make a suggestion, if you didn't like enforcing response, that at least give consideration to how you might increase the, uh, the response rate from your line managers. And I really would like that point taken forward. Okay, uh, Councillor McLaughlin, in the minutes it actually states, uh, Councillor McLaughlin, whether the line managers uh, are asked whether the line manager survey considered 49%, 51% uh, didn't respond. And he asked whether it should be uh, compulsory. Uh, I was actually not discounting that. I, I agree with what you're saying. But Bal came back and said that it isn't a compulsory, it isn't, it isn't meant to be compulsory. I don't think we can enforce it of being compulsory. But I do think, I agree, we should be strongly advising the line managers to carry this out because it shows they're in contact and communication with their staff. So... I, I wasn't dismissing it. Um, I totally behind you on that. But from the comment from the officer, that's why I didn't carry forward. If you'd like to make it as a recommendation to look into it, or we strongly advise it, which would you prefer? Um, I did move on from the, from the compulsion aspect and said give consideration to in increasing uh, the, the, the rate of response, uh, which doesn't sound like that bit got into the minutes. And, and if, we're, if we're handing out advisory uh, notes to, uh, to, to officers, I would like that to go as an advisory note, that they do consider how they can increase the response rate from line managers when we do this survey. Okay, thank you very much. So that's an advisory note to, I think, Councillor, sorry, I think Mr. Callum Matthews has got that down, but it's seconded by uh, 
Councillor Blackmore. I do uh, back that as well. Um, I think we should be advising them or pushing them or strongly encouraging. Good word. Thank you very much, Councillor Gooch. Uh, strongly advising them to um, do this because it uh, would show that they are in contact and they are understanding what their employees are, are doing. So we're all in favour of that, please. Councillor Harper, are you? Yes. No, you are. Excellent. Thank you very much. Councillor Burton, you're not. I, I am, but I may not have said it loud enough. I did move next order of business ages ago. Sorry, the next order of... Yeah. <laughs> right, thank you very much. Agenda item 10, then, to report the report from the Head of Policy and Communications, the appointment to subcommittee. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, this report arises from the uh, result of the by-election that took place uh, last year, uh, September last year, uh, and uh, the requirement, if we're following political balance, to change the composition of the subcommittees of this committee. And taking the first one uh, uh, as an example, which you can see on page 75, paragraph 2.2, uh, the the way that the requirements about balance can be satisfied is by having uh, an appointment subcommittee which is two Conservatives, two Liberal Democrats and one either independent or UKIP and going back to when the uh, committees were uh, appointed, the main committees were appointed in the autumn, uh, I had discussions with the, the relevant group leaders and it was agreed between them that uh, that they would alternate uh, in that, uh, that slot on uh, the appointment subcommittee um, such that for the, for the current municipal year uh, the independents would hold that position and then it would uh, go to the UKIP and uh, of course we'll have elections again in 2018 so we'll probably be in a bit different ball game after that anyway. Um, so, so that is the principle that, uh, that this uh, is proposing. Uh, so far as the individual membership of committees is concerned, uh, I understand we haven't had uh, specific nominations uh, in respect of the different subcommittees. So the proposal is that the membership should come from members of this committee uh, uh, in relation to the different committees. I think the reality is that it's unlikely that for the remainder of this municipal year these committees will meet but it's uh, important just to agree the principle if, if members are happy with that. Do you also agree in terms of adoption as well which um, is 3.2? Yes, yeah, so sorry to add on page 76 the second option is that you can just uh, ignore the requirements about political balance and nominate directly from this committee to those, uh, to those subcommittees. Okay, does anybody like to speak to this? Yes, Councillor Batmore. Chairman, if I may, um, I, th I think the delicate negotiations that went on behind um, the scenes to achieve this balance. I take my hat off to everyone because I think it can be quite tricky times, as we all know. Um, so I think we should uh, just get on and approve it, and I'd be very happy to move the recommendation. Thank you very much. Council Blackmore, would anybody... Is that 3.1 or 3.2, then? Sorry, do you mean page 78 and 79? Has it been torn out? No. no? So does it, does it look like appointment subcommittee at the top? No, we don't have that then. That 
This, you're absolutely right. Mrs. Matthews sent this round, uh, I think, at the end of last week, or maybe even on Monday. Um, and I'm just assuming we'll just go with what's on this list, because it appears to fulfil the criteria that we were asked to submit some months ago. With, with the greatest respect, Mr. Chairman, group leaders has no authority to make a decision. We're the committee being invited to approve this. We actually have blank pages in front of us. I'm bemused. Yeah, can, I, can I only agree with you, Councillor Burton, as I don't even have one of those as I'm not a group leader. Uh, could I refer to uh, Ms. Price, please? Sorry. Um, I think at the last meeting, I think there was um, a lot of discussion around not having politically balanced subcommittees, which is why we've given both options here and which is why we took out the population for these papers, because I know that there was some consideration that you were, think, you were considering not going with the political balance and just having it from the subcommittees being from a um, set from picked at from who was available to sit on the subcommittee from the employment committee. Um, so that option is available to you, which is why we put both options in the paper and haven't populated the table. If you want to stay with a political balance, then obviously if you're happy with the, the, na the recommendations that were sent around, um, we can read those out if, if you, I don't know if Caroline has them with her, um, then we can go ahead with it being as politically balanced as it was in the past. So we don't wade into the quadmire of all the hands going up and down. Um, was there... A, yeah. <laughs> would, you, would, would the committee like me to read this out to be public knowledge first? Mi or Mr. Do you Mr. Chair, if, if you actually proposed it, if anybody's unhappy, they can then say so. <clears throat> but I'll be happy to second it if you do so. Okay, it's listed as Appendix A, Appointment Subcommittee, brackets, to consider the applications received for the post of Chief Executive and Directors and to compile a shortlist for interview and subsequently to interview and make appointments. New brackets, in case of the Chief Executive, this is subject to confirmation by full council. Panel to comprise of five councillors, two Conservative, two Liberal Democrat and one Independent or UKIP. Chair, so all, all you need to read is the names. Oh, I see. Just the name of the committee, the names that are being recommended for appointment. And if you move that, I'll second okay. it and we'll vote on it. Righty-ho. Then the names for this appointment subcommittee is Blackmore, Burton, Wilson, Cox and Gooch. Substitutes, Garton, McLaughlin, Ring, Joy, Mortimer, Mumford, Sams J and Sams T. Do the whole lot in one go. Okay. For the performance subcommittee, panel to comprise of five councillors, including the group leaders of the largest parties, are Blackmore, Wilson, Gooch, Powell and Harper. And then no substitutes for that. The investigatory subcommittee, should comprise of three councillors, one Conservative, one Liberal Democrat, and one Independent or UKIP. Therefore, that is Burton and Cox and Mumford for the Independents. Substitutes would be Garton and Ring, Joy and Mortimer, and the two Sams. The hearing subcommittee should comprise of three councillors, namely Blackmore, Wilson and Gooch, with substitutes McLaughlin, Ring, Joy and Mortimer, Sams J and Sams T. The Appeals Subcommittee should comprise of three councillors, Blackmore, Wilson and Gooch, substitutes Burton, Garton, McLaughlin, Ring, Joy, Cox, Mortimer, Mumford, Sams J and Sams T. Happy to second that, Chairman. Thank you very much. Query from Councillor Gooch, go ahead. I'm awfully sorry, but on one of those committees, uh, the subcommittees, the rep was Councillor Munford. Can you remind me what that subcommittee was? 
because I thought he was a substitute. That's the appeals subcommittee. You mean the main people on the committee or the, or the substitutes? Hold on. The investigatory subcommittee. Because you can't be on both. Because you can't be on. Yeah. You couldn't be on an investigatory and then the. Yeah. Apologise. Thank you. That's very helpful. Okay, Thank you, Chairman. So that's been sorted. So, all those in favour of what I've read out? Councillor Harper? You're, you're, you're sitting. He's coming. He's with us. Absolutely brilliant. Thank you very much. That is carried. All those in favour? Brilliant. That's it. Thank you very much. Unless there's anything else to carry out, I don't think there is. Thank you very much for attending. Meeting closed.